in 2019, the aviation industry emitted 915 million tons of carbon dioxide, which is just over 2% of global carbon emissions. While it may not seem like a lot, if the global aviation industry was a country, it would rank in the top 10 emitters of CO2. With the demand for flying and travel increasing, the aviation industry is expected to double its number of passengers by 2037. Considering CO2 emissions from airlines has climbed by 32% between 2013 and 2018, it's highly likely that with an influx of passengers, aviation emissions will triple by 2050. Recently, airlines have faced significant pressures to prevent this from occurring by reducing their environmental impact and emissions. To accommodate this, the aviation industry has committed to halving their 2005 CO2 emissions by 2050. However, this would be an enormous feat which would require serious innovation, planning and funding. Currently, airlines use kerosene or jet fuel which produces large amounts of CO2, nitrogen oxides, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons and soot. These are released into the upper atmosphere, causing a warming effect on Earth, which is accelerated when occurring at higher altitudes. Furthermore, hydrocarbons, soot, and water vapor have a cooling effect, creating contrail-induced cirrus clouds, which have a dramatic and serious impact on the climate by affecting Earth's radiation balance. When these are added with the negative effects of tankering, which means planes carrying more fuel than they need to save money on refueling at pricier airports, it is clear that something within the industry needs to change. One potential method to reduce emissions is for planes to use rechargeable batteries as their power source. This would enable airlines to achieve net zero emissions faster than any other method and battery operated planes would be far cheaper to maintain once in circulation. While the idea is still in its early days, progress is being made. There are two seater electric planes being used to train pilots and EasyJet have plans to develop a 180 seat electric aircraft by 2027. However, there are multiple downsides to these type of aircraft. Currently, they have a very limited flying time and range due to battery technology and weight. This means that, at best, electric planes would only be a viable option for domestic flights. Norway intends to adopt electrical planes for domestic flights by 2040. It's also worth noting that domestic or short-haul flights produce more emissions than international flights. However, when considering battery issues, this is an overly optimistic time frame for both EasyJet and Norway. Perhaps a more likely option to achieve this goal would be a hybrid. Whilst the short-term future of electric planes is uncertain, it is definitely a solution all airlines must work towards. Biofuels are an effective short-term solution which reduces emissions. The biofuel process takes general household waste, turning it into sustainable aviation fuel. It emits 60% less greenhouse gases and 90% fewer particulates than fossil fuels. It also avoids the polluting process required to produce kerosene and it prevents the waste from emitting greenhouse gases in landfills. British Airways, with assistance from Shell, are at the forefront of biofuel development with plans to build a commercial waste to jet fuel plant. So biofuels would clearly reduce airline emissions. However, they do have drawbacks. Biofuels still release the same amount of greenhouse gases as they would if they were in a landfill. They just have a shorter life cycle. Biofuels would not be used alone, but would be blended with kerosene. The International Airlines Group, or IAG, intends to, for biofuels to provide up to 25% of jet fuel by 2050. So while emissions would be reduced, airlines would still find it difficult to reach their target of 50% through blending. Furthermore, the production of biofuels is still relatively novel and therefore is likely to require high initial investments. Nevertheless, it is probably the aviation industry's best bet at reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. Carbon offsetting schemes are perhaps the most popular methods of reducing emissions as it makes customers feel less guilty. It works by customers paying a scheme to reduce or absorb carbon. 
which has an environmental benefit such as planting trees. However, these schemes do not deal with the initial problem of emissions. Instead, they distract from the issue, allowing corporations to continue with their current unsustainable and harmful procedures whilst shifting responsibility elsewhere. They would also need to occur on a mass scale if it is to have a profound impact. In 2016, the Carbon Offsetting and Reduction Scheme for International Airlines, or CORSIA, was introduced. This stated that any increase of CO2 emissions above 2020 levels would have to be offset by airlines. Whilst this is a fantastic breakthrough in terms of holding airlines to account, it still negates the initial problem as described and only deals with any further growth. It does not reduce emissions. Furthermore, China, which is responsible for 13% of global CO2 emissions, and Russia do not intend to take part until 2027 which does not help. Of course, the best thing to do to reduce emissions is for us to stop flying. However, this is unrealistic. Airlines are unlikely to advise against flying as they don't want to impede their own industry's growth and we want to go on holidays, carry out businesses and visit family and friends. Instead, we should be more thoughtful in choosing how we travel and if we even need to travel in the first place. For example, if you were to travel from London to Madrid, you would emit 43 kgs of CO2 per passenger by train, but 118 kgs by plane. Whilst it may be a longer trip, it's far better for the environment. COVID-19 has also demonstrated to us that there are alternative methods to conduct international businesses. If we continue in this way, we could save hundreds of thousands of greenhouse gases from being emitted into the atmosphere. So what can you do to help decrease emissions and your carbon footprint? First, you need to fly less frequently and use the alternative methods of transport. Second, you need to pack lighter when traveling to reduce weight and in turn fuel consumption. Third, fly direct to your destination. Planes use more fuel during takeoff and landing, so avoiding this will reduce emissions. Fourth, try not to travel business or first class because your carbon footprint will be at least three times higher. Five, use local airports if you can. And six, offset your flights, but be aware that they aren't directly dealing with the problem. While these don't necessarily reduce emissions on a large scale, it's better than doing nothing. If everyone follows these pointers and airlines meet their targets, then we can reduce our carbon footprint and emissions and fight back against global warming.